And welcome back. As I understood it, he'd been around at least as long as the captain. He was a bit of a flirt and a joker, but he mostly did that to keep people in high spirits. I'd never actually seen him going out with anyone. There were times I caught a glimpse of his eyes. They always had a sad look to them, but then he'd perk right up when they closed again. Even though he was older than me, somehow he looked younger than me. He claimed one of his dishes, Eternal Swamp Gumbo, had regenerative properties. I tried it. If anything, that nasty stuff would, would make you wish you could rip your tongue off and regenerate a new one. Other than that, he was a really good cook. Not just any cook, I mean the best one I'd ever known. Johnny had been s scouring the galaxy for, sev for various cuisines, learning how to, m how to make everything he came across. I bet he could make a piece of wood taste delicious. His various travels have also gave him countless stories to tell. He knew how to make anything I'd ever asked of him, no matter how obscure. In addition to being our central chef, Johnny sometimes worked as communications on the bridge. For all his good qualities, he had one major fault. He was always broke. This is primarily due to the fact that he was a downright terrible gambler. From money schemes to gambling, he picked absolutely horribly. You think with all his galactic knowledge, he'd know how to make moolah. Curiously, he showed absolute loyalty to the captain. They kind of looked similar. Must have been the eyes. He was a mysterious person, to be sure, but he was he has never let me down. Remembering back to earlier today, we managed to figure out more of the message. The Federation ambush, beware the star. I wonder what that could mean. Oh, you're back! What can I do for you, hon? Nothing. Just wanted to see how you are. Well then, what would you like to know about? Well, uh... I was dying to ask about the eye of hers, but I felt it was too soon. What are you eating, anyway? That looks very... exotic. That's another invention of mine. I call it... Uh, Eagle Burger. Care for a bite? Uh, the name alone makes me think I should pass. Suit yourself! Um, mind if I ask you a question instead? Sure, what is it? Don't you think I'm weird? Is that bad? Well, everyone else seems to think so. Uh, you're certainly different, unique even, but everyone's got their own quirks. Oh, what are your quirks? I don't know, I guess my oddity is that I like talking to people who are different. Ah! That's a cop-out answer! I know. I'm also good at giving generic answers. Well, thanks for stopping to chat with me. I feel better already. So, tell me. Why all the interest in these moolah schemes of yours? Oh, one can never have too much moolah, right? Yeah, but isn't this enough for you? You've got your own cafe. A little a solid home, and you're among friends. Well, I never said that Moolah was for me. You got some mouths to feed? I've got plenty of family outside of the Ishii. Wow, I never took you for a family, man. I've never seen you visit relatives, though. Hmm, my relatives are scattered throughout the galaxy. No way I could visit them all. So, you have a huge family after all? I suppose you could say that, yes. What about you? What do you spend your moolah on? I'll let you in on a little secret. What's that? If you save up your moolah, I'll tell you more secrets as we go along. Uh, nice secret. Woo! I'm finally finished the shield's modules! Each shield mod installed adds plus 10 to your shield strength, 
modified by your shield percentage stat. This might not sound like much, but when you consider that shields regenerate, it may be worth the investment. I recommend investing in enough shields to absorb one shot safely. Please note, this mod does not improve your shield regeneration rate. Okay, so... Weapons... Laser. Frozen Tundra. Funny those weapons go through the uh, wall. Uh oh. Oh boy, not doing too well, am I? Gonna have to perform this boss well. Yes. That's it! We got it! Great, what did we get? We've managed to track down the pirate ship that sent the signal! I strongly believe that whatever the Federation is looking for is on that ship. Alright, I'll program the location in the snail's... I mean, Skyfish's computer first thing up before I leave tomorrow. Hopefully whatever it is, is still down there. I believe it is so, or the Federation would have already left. Curiously, we recently received another pirate distress signal. This one originates from some place I don't even know. Weird. Same ship? We're not sure. Unlike the other signal, this one is heavily encrypted. It will take some time to decode it. Whoever sent it must really not want the Federation to crack it. I will contact you again when we make any new developments. Good. I'm beat. I'm gonna go take a break. Very well. You are dismissed. Deuce, there you are. Come join me. Huh? What's this about? I've got something for you. This isn't like you. Normally you ambush me or give me a shout or shout out. Here, some mystery chocolates. What the? Did Johnny manage to pawn these off on you? Huh? He told me they'd be something you'd like! Just out of curiosity, how much did he ask for? Er, ten moolah. Is that bad? 
As I thought. No, that's why I'm asking me for 15. What brought about your interest in giving me these, anyway? I seem to remember yesterday you were talking with Johnny about how you only see me for the new weapons. Th that's not true. But why else wouldn't you stop by? Uh, well... It's okay. I will try to be more professional in my dealings with you. No, that's not it, Deadeye. It's true you can be intimidating, but you're a friend to all of us. I don't mind stopping by just to chat once in a while. I'm actually fascinated by your work on weapons. I mean, I have to be. I'm always trusting my life to your weapons. Well, I suppose you're right. You really like my weapons? I like seeing what you come up with, yeah. Okay, okay, get going. I need to finish my work on the next weapon so I can show you before anyone else. Right, thanks, Deadeye. Much appreciated. As I came back to my room, I could already hear the snoring. Sure enough, Tessa was sleeping soundly on the couch. She didn't even make it back to her room. She just collapsed on the couch from exhaustion. I flipped on the monitor to my favorite comedy program and started to pull out some ingredients for a snack. Knock knock. Hmm? Who could that be? Hello, sorry if I'm bothering you. Oh, Ginny, what brings you here? I wanted to ask about, uh... What about? Ginny slowly angled her head as, as her gaze went past me straight to Tessa. Good goodness! I came at a bad time, didn't I? No, not at all. Oh, you mean Tessa. Nah, she's dead tired from working all day. Don't worry about disturbing her, as long as we speak softer than her snoring. You mean she comes here to rest? Sure, it's her couch. I thought this was your quarters, though. It is. She's my roommate. Oh, oh, a um, pardon. You sound surprised. It's not that weird, is it? We should keep it down, though. No, no, just unexpected is all. So, what was it you wanted to talk to me about? Oh, um, never mind. I'll come by again when it's more convenient. You sure? Yeah, sorry to bother you. I watched as Ginny clumsily left the hall. Seriously, it wasn't that strange, was it? I turned back to the room and thought about Tessa. Tessa and I spent much of our youth in a Federation research station. Her mother was a scientist studying an alien artifact. Well, her father was a starship engineer maintaining the station. They didn't have a great deal of time to take care of her, so we often hung out with Swig, who was always happy to play with us. Even though they worked for the Federation, Tessa's parents were really agents for the pirates, granting pirates access to lab and engineering materials. One day, there was an accident in the lab, and Tessa's mother was vaporized in an explosion. After hearing about the accident, Swig and her dad immediately gathered her stuff and came here to Oracle's mothership. An investigation into Tessa's family would promptly reveal her family's association with pirates, and we would all be executed. We had no choice but to come here. Since then, we lived our lives out here. I must confess it was a lot more comfortable here than that stuffy lab station. Tessa was like a little sister to me. She often acted like she had something to prove, but I admit she had a more level head than me. She was sweet to anyone but me. Tessa's dad died quite a few years back due to an early attack on the mothership, causing a core breach. Upset at the loss, Tessa took it upon herself to become the best doctor around. She wasn't Federation certified, but she certainly did, did her homework and possessed an anat anatomical knowledge of many sentient species in our galaxy. I started to whip up some sandwiches for us to eat later. Being the ship's primary doctor, she was on duty nearly 24-7. She often returned with bags under her eyes, messy hair and clothes, and simply bury buried in the couch. I think, I think out of any of us, she by far had the most stressful job. I didn't make it easy on her either, often needing a patch job after a mission but I tried to alleviate her burden. The least I could do was make dinner and do her chores, though I was nowhere near as good a cook as Johnny. Is breakfast ready yet? No, it's not even nighttime yet. Get back to sleep. Fooey, hey, remember when we were kids? When you first came to live on the research station? 
You were really angry at something. Of course I was angry. I was a little boy. I think my favorite star vanished that night, but why were you so angry? You never told me why. It was my birthday, and I lost my parents. It's not something I like to bring up. I was so frustrated I couldn't do anything about it. You can't blame yourself for that. I know, but as a kid, that's how I was. After that, I shouted something dumb, like I wish there was no such thing as wishes. Nice birthday wish, huh? And on to fear. Bye!